It's been said that elephants have excellent memory. Research has shown that they are capable of remembering specific experiences for extremely long periods of time. Elephants have arguably one of the most intelligent brains in the animal kingdom. Able to recognize as many as 30 companions by sight or smell. Known to remember watering holes used in droughts over 30 years ago. In fact, the saying, an elephant never forgets, is not so far from the truth. I don't have that kind of memory. I can't even remember what I had for breakfast yesterday, and that's assuming I even ate breakfast. That being said, I do think that there are times and events in our lives that we'll always look back on and remember exactly where we were and what we were doing. One of the atomic reactors at the Chernobyl atomic power plant. appears to have been a very serious accident. I did not have sexual relations with that vehicle is registered to Al Cowling, a former teammate, close friend of O.J. Simpson. Oh my God, another plane has just hit. It hit another plane. Certainly some areas already have gotten hit very hard. We are calling it iPhone. Washington State resident fell ill after returning from Wuhan, China, where the outbreak began. Back in April of 2020, the global outbreak of COVID-19 was front and center of every news broadcast across every television and every phone screen. I think I speak for everyone when I say that the pandemic is one of those once-in-a-lifetime events that none of us will ever forget, though I'm sure some of us would love to be able to. I particularly will never forget the part where I could not physically leave the house. As a creative who likes to put beautiful things in front of his camera lens, being only able to stare out my window kind of sucked. But while the world was dealing with COVID-19, Fujifilm was in its own little world and had just quietly released a compact, fixed-lens, rangefinder-inspired camera called the X100V. Now, unless you were a Fuji fanboy at the time, the X100V's release was relatively under the radar, or at least it was for me. The internet branding this tiny camera as a must-have was something I was blissfully unaware of. But as usual, when camera communities start talking, I start listening, and so I decided to stop watching and do what I do best. Research. I quickly learned that the X100V was a premium, compact camera that was small in size but big in features. It's not the size that counts, it's how you use it! It comes packed with a large APS-C sensor, a 23mm f2 lens, optical and electronic viewfinders, a built-in ND filter, tilting touchscreen, weather sealing, and the ability to shoot 4K 10-bit video at 30 frames per second. For a casual camera user, that might sound like a lot of techno babble. Sir, a 23mm f2 lens, optical and electronic viewfinders, a built-in ND filter, tilting touchscreen, weather sealing, and the ability to shoot 4K 10-bit video at 30 frames per second. Brilliant! <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what's going on. But for me, it was enough to decide that I wanted to get this little beast in my hands as soon as possible and try it out. There was only one problem. everywhere. And as time went on, used prices just kept climbing and climbing. Hell, right now, Amazon is selling them brand new for $21.99, which is a whopping $800 more than what it costs to buy it brand new normally. And they're selling. It was clear. The demand for the X100V was incredibly high, and this was a surprise to me. I asked myself, why is this two-year-old camera so popular? Is it overhyped? I'm sorry that people are so jealous of me, but I can't help it that I'm popular. Well, I wouldn't understand this until I finally got an X100V for myself. I was able to find one on Fuji's refurbished site for $9.99, and now that I've had the pleasure of owning it for about four and a half months, I can safely say, I get it. Allow me to explain a few reasons why, though. 
I love the X100V's size. I love that I can slip this thing into my pocket or a fanny pack and carry it with me everywhere. This makes it an easy choice for when I want to just have a camera to carry with me for the day. Because of its compact size, it lends itself very well to street photography, daily documentation, and candid photos. It simply gets out of the way of your creativity, if that makes sense. This is thanks to having just enough buttons on the clearly Leica-inspired rangefinder-style body to program exactly what I need for quick access. In addition to the ISO, shutter speed, and exposure compensation dials on top that I've come to expect from a Fuji build. It also has a fair amount of weight, and you can tell when you're holding it that it's built superbly well. I added a thumb grip for extra stability and a more comfortable grip, as I found it was lacking without it, in addition to a lens hood and shutter button because... Uh, <laughs> I didn't really need those. This is me shamefully admitting that I just thought they looked cool, and that's why I bought it. Guilty. <laughs> also, I don't know about you guys, but I love me a good flippy screen, and while I generally prefer them to the uh, tilted display, like the one on the X100V, I found that the tilting display on this camera just makes shooting from the hip that much quicker and easier. And while I do appreciate the EVF and the beautiful, bright OVF, I'm pretty much always looking at the LCD. On that note, I basically treat it like a point-and-shoot and leave it on aperture priority probably 99% of the time, and I think that that works great for me. One of the great benefits of every generation of Fuji's lineup of cameras is that they all share the same sensor. So the X100V isn't lacking in image quality compared to its bigger brothers and sisters within the X-Trans4 lineup, like the X-T4 or the X-S10. The attached 23mm f2 lens wasn't initially my favorite. I've never really shot much on this focal length to begin with. I'm more of a 50mm kind of guy. But over time, I found that this 35mm equivalent is exceptionally sharp, has incredible low light capability, and is wide enough that should I feel the need to crop in for a better composition, I can do so in post without too much loss in image quality. Fuji does offer a couple of different conversion lenses that you can add on to the body for different focal lengths, but for the price, I find myself just using the digital conversion instead if I'm desperate for a tighter focal length. Ultimately, the idea of a fixed lens may be off-putting for some. I find that this forces two distinct but very opposing behaviors. On one hand, I have to be more intentional about my framing because I'm limited to a specific focal length. But on the other hand, I don't. I can just enjoy capturing the moment and the spirit of the shot versus trying to think about gear and lenses and yada yada. I know that this might not be for everybody, but I actually find it quite liberating. Lastly, I have to talk about the JPEGs. I've talked at length about Fuji's incredible JPEG quality and using Fuji's film recipes in past videos. It's common knowledge in the industry, and it's true. Their cameras are unrivaled in this regard. I've also talked about how it's improved my workflow in my everyday photography. And on the X100V, this is no different. The JPEGs are incredible and require very little editing, aside from maybe slight adjustments to shadows and highlights. Adopting this kind of workflow is so much fun and really embodies the spirit of those old point-and-shoots or disposable film cameras. You didn't think about things, you just took the picture and just went on with your day. Adding those gorgeous colors to the sharp image quality on a camera that feels great and is easy to carry around and is simply gorgeous just further supports the idea of an everyday camera that works very well. <laughs> Okay, so after all of that, is the X100V a good camera? My answer is... maybe. Make no mistake about it, it's my favorite camera of all time. And for $1,400, it's worth the price, albeit a little expensive for what it offers in terms of specs on paper. But these specs aren't the true value of this camera for me. Sure, it's small, it's compact, it's easy to use, it's packed with useful features and takes great photos. So what? So do a bunch of other cameras. That's not the reason why this is my favorite camera of all time. To bring up an earlier point, there are times in our lives that we'll always look back on and remember exactly where we were and what we were doing. Unfortunately, those times are few and far between and are typically reserved for life's biggest moments. The day you graduated. Your favorite road trip. Your wedding day. Buying your first house. But what about all those moments in between those milestones? As photographers, or even just 
casual photo taking people. At the end of our days, when we look back at our body of work, it's not the headshots, the client work, the real estate photos, the product photos, or even photos of our food that will actually matter. It's the little moments in our lives, the moments with our loved ones, the moments with the people we surround ourselves with, who made a difference in our lives and made us feel something. The ones who made us feel alive. Those are the photos that truly mean something. Those are the photos that get put in that old family album that lives on that bookshelf for generations. And unless you have the memory of an elephant, having a camera that can document those little moments and be at your side, ready to make a photograph at a moment's notice, is so important. This camera has shown me how much the little moments matter. The small stuff that I wouldn't have been able to notice before when I was too busy fiddling with camera settings or swapping lenses. That's why this camera is so special. Now, before you take all this praise and say to yourself, that's it, I'm going online right now and finding the first available X100V and I'm gonna buy it no matter the price. Remember this, this video was about you finding your X100V, figuratively. If what you're after is a camera that all the influencers, TikTokers, and YouTubers like myself told you was awesome and that's reason enough to get it at a 50% markup, you've got it wrong. There are far better cameras out there, some for far less money. Going after a camera for that reason, you'd more than likely be disappointed and try to resell it. This is definitely a niche camera and it is not for everybody. But consider this, they say that the best camera is the one that you always have on you and that you can use well. Don't quote me on that, I know it's not word for word, but it's, it's close enough. Anyway, for a lot of you folks, that camera might already be your phone, or a camera that's yet to come out, or even a camera that you already own. And maybe this is that camera and you just don't know it yet. But either way, invest in that ideology and not the hype like I did. I love this camera. It just so happens to be the X100V. But it doesn't have to be. So, what's your X100V? Thank you so much for watching, guys. As always, if you found something of value, learned something, you laughed, or you were simply entertained, give this video a thumbs up. It would greatly help the channel out. And if you liked this video and you want to see more videos like this one, subscribe if you haven't already. You know I appreciate it. I know this video took a while to get out. Between my full-time job, life, producing videos like this one takes a great deal of time and effort. But these are the types of videos I like to make. I hope you like it and expect to see more of it. I do have some uh, simpler videos on the pipeline, um, so expect those to be coming out a little bit sooner than later. Anyways, until the next one, get out there, be kind to one another, and go make something. Peace. Here I am, sitting on another bench again. <laughs> I can't let you go, baby and go make something. Peace. Bye. Cause I love you, baby. I swear to God, I could spend this whole video itching. Put this shirt on so that it looks like I took these photos at different points in time. Because, you know, how you make videos, I guess. Wardrobe change. Maybe I'll make this my thing. I'll just sit on benches, random benches.